Hi everyone, so this will be a video about skinning parts with carbon fiber. So I've got a lot of requests on my Facebook page and so on about skinning car parts for example. So in this tutorial I've chosen for an Iron Man mask and two Spider-Man mask. Um, so don't think skinning parts with carbon fiber is just an easy and quick way to make carbon fiber looking parts. It will add some strength but uh, it will add some weight as well. So um, here's a guy um, I've been following for a while, he's called Legacy um, Props, he's doing a lot of uh, props, he also did an Iron Man mask in the past, so um, just to say I'm not the best at, at this, but I will just try to explain you how to do it. Uh, you can find his Instagram and Facebook in the links down below under this video in the description. I've also added some um, topics on top. You can skip some parts by just clicking on them and you will be directed right through that part in the video by clicking onto that chapter. So for this tutorial I've chosen for an Iron Man mask and a Spider-Man mask. So I've did a small uh, request which one I should choose. Uh, Eduardo Suaza, I hope I pronounce your name, your na your name well. Um, he was thinking like Spider-Man would be the easiest. But in this video you'll see the Spider-Man mask is the more difficult one. So to start this, this tutorial with first thing you need to do is clean your parts all the excess um, has to be removed so here I'm removing some uh, straps just to put a mask around your head um, that would be annoying in um, the making of the part if they were still on so the first thing to do is just sand the part just to have a nice grip uh, with your base coat um, so here it's looking like Iron Man just got back from a big battle and just need some updates on his mask so um, it was thoroughly sanded um, with, a, with a high grit so a grit 80 then you wash um, the parts with some soapy water uh, just to remove all the dirt and dust left into the in, into the mask uh, so I did this for um, both masks so here you can see I'm just cleaning it with water. Then I'm using an air compressor uh, just to remove all the dust before adding some um, grease remover just to be sure that uh, the part is fully clean um, to work with. So next step is uh, masking, up, masking off all the um, gaps just to make sure there's no resin dripping through. So this is how it looks like. So just exactly the same with the Spider-Man mask. So the next step is um, I'm using uh, the skinning base coat from Easy Composites. So this is optional but I would um, suggest you to use it um, just to have a good cover on, uh, on top of the base. So you're using one part of hardener and two parts of um, the other um, component so one of them is black and the other one is just um, transparent um, so you thoroughly mix them and you'll get um, a darkened epoxy so you could also do this with clear epoxy but the problem is uh, you will get some um, print through, see through from the red for example through your carbon fiber um, if you're not doing it well. So this was the first time for me as well using this. Um, I've noticed it didn't have so much cover but I will uh, explain you a bit more about this and um, further on in this video. <coughs> so you just apply a good coat of the base coat um, and then you'll wait for it to get tacky uh, tacky means it if you put your finger in it it won't leave a mark but it has a sticky sound so this is not uh, good enough so um, you may not have this sticky feel um, onto your brush so you still have to wait a bit I've waited around two to three hours for it to get tacky so here is another trick I'm using some masking tape 
before cutting uh, the carbon fiber just to prevent it from fraying and just to get good results so at this step <coughs> I'm just putting down the carbon fiber on top of the mask always work your way out from the middle so um, I work my way out from the middle of the mask with the nose then just go to the edges and make sure um, there's not too much fraying into the carbon fiber or distortion into the fibers um, if needed you can add some cuts uh, down below in the tape <coughs> um, just to make sure that the weave is completely against uh, against the mark uh, mask on all parts of the mask so here you can just cut with a, with a pair of scissors this will give uh, the material a bit more workability uh, just to make uh, the shape fully covered um, on the mask once you're done you can just start trimming all the carbon fiber around uh, the mask that is left over and then you'll start seeing uh, the mask a bit better so next step will be just to compress um, everything down so but first uh, thing to do is just tape off the edges onto the inside of the mask so they don't disturb you further on in your process so here you can just press it on a bit um, thanks to the tacky base coats uh, there should be a good bond between the carbon fiber and the um, and the mask so next thing to do is uh, the eyes of this mask were a bit more complicated but you can just apply it on then do some small cuts um, here I'm using some scissors so it's not fully in the frame so the camera position was bad but you can just understand what I'm doing so I'm just cutting uh, into the carbon fiber just to give it more space to compress all the fibers against the insides of the eyes of this iron of this spider-man mask next step optional uh, but it's it's a good thing to have it's just a vacuum pump um, this will compress all the carbon fiber tightly against the parts as you can see here so um, a lot of detail is showing up thanks to the vacuum compressing everything tightly against the parts so while under vacuum so this is a step it would take you around three to four, four hours in a vacuum you can start making a vacuum bag so this is a step I I failed so uh, it was something I had to try um, it's the elasto film from easy composites I'll add the correct name and product description down below in the description of this video um, just as you can see here this is how far it stretches the, prob the problem is I didn't read the technical data sheet and it's not self-releasing from epoxy and so on so this was the first problem um, the second thing to take note of is that this is not an enveloped bag it's just taped with some tacky tape um, so you have two parts you just have to stick together onto uh, each other with gum tape so as you can see here I'm removing the Iron Man mask from the vacuum uh, from before um, as you can see everything is um, tightly against the mask and uh, the carbon fiber won't lift off anymore so um, next step would be to add some epoxy resin on top of that um, just to create um, a weighted out carbon fiber so here as you can see I'm just pushing against it with my fingers carbon fiber won't uh, lift off of it so here I'm using uh, the laminating epoxy from easy composite so mixing ratios are 10 to 30 uh, so you take uh, 100 grams of A and then add 30 of B so for this I'm using around if I'm correct 50 grams of um, A and just added 15 grams of B just to saturate those two masks so you will have to pass on a few times the carbon fiber will absorb some resin so um, a second pass is advised so you just make sure you wet out um, the entire part 
what I did here is just I've put it back into the Elastofilm um, bag I've made. You don't have to do this. I will explain uh, further on in this video how to do a perfect um, skinning of a part. So as you can see I've just wanted to add this step so this is a failure um, but I know it can be done maybe with more simple parts so um, all of this is mounted on a plate and then I was hoping the elastofilm would just um, bend around the mask giving me a high gloss coat from the first time do some sanding add a second coat and I would be ready but the problem was the mask was starting to look like uh, a flat pancake as you can see here on the right and the spider-man mask is totally deformed due to the vacuum um, even when uh, with the supports uh, under it so what I did it was like messing around I've just opened the bag removed the plate put it all back into the bag until now I didn't know the elastofilm wasn't releasing so um, it was an added problem so after that I have to say I've just decided to start all over again instead of uh, just start sanding and do all these steps in between so here you can see the two masks um, next to each other as you can see it's kind of hard to remove but I think it's, it's possible to do it um, but you will see a lot of wrinkles and so on so um, at this step you could continue on your errors try to fix them but sometimes it's just better to go back from start and just do it all over again so as you can see here I've just called it fail I've seen it on 9gag I guess um, so first attempt in learning so failing will be part of uh, making parts with composites so what I did is just start all over, improved my techniques. So um, as you can see here, I've added some pigments from um, Easy Composite, so a black pigment to the base coat just to make it more dark um, as a base coat. So you will see the results. Um, it's way darker, less print through, um, as you can see here. So another thing, uh, another thing I've added is I did three masks because I found some um, red uh, carbon fiber looking um, uh, material as well as home. So I've decided to do three masks. Um, the carbon fiber on the Iron Mask Iron Man mask is a 400 gram square meter, so it's a, a thicker one. Um, I'm very pleased um, having used that 400 grams instead of 220 um, because it was more easy to put around the parts and um, yes but one problem was you're losing some detail with it so this is how it looks like um, before bagging so I've bagged it all up again um, just work your way around uh, make sure there's no air traps or you have some vo voids or bridging so bridging means parts where the back is not fully in contact with your part so this is how it looks like with three masks next to each other so next step again I know this is some repetition but I just wanted to include it all just to make sure you understand everything well so here you can see the texture so everything is still dry um, but now the epoxy will be applied on top of that without bagging so um, just um, level, it, level it all up uh, layer by layer so this is the first layer of, of epoxy so um, the epoxy cures very fast so um, I've used the laminating epoxy from uh, easy composites with the fast hardener so your pot life is like it's it's really fast like it's like around 20 minutes so you have to be very quick the good thing is it cures um, fast as well so 
I have did two coats. Um, so this is the second coat, uh, wet on wet. So after two to three hours, you can add the second coat. Um, if you're new with composites and so on, do not think about mixing like 300 grams. Use uh, one layer uh, now, then come back three hours later, do the second uh, layer. You just have to mix it all up in batches of like say 100 grams um, after each time. So after the two layers, I'm sanding off um, all the errors, all the, all the small bubbles that came up, uh, just to level it all out. So for him, for the next few minutes in this video, it will be all about adding layers and sanding. But I've just wanted to edit it just to make um, make it clear how you will progress after each layer of epoxy and sanding in between. So this is the third layer. So it's already starting to look good, um, but you can see some small problems. Um, so this is a reason why the Spider-Man mask was more difficult. It's very difficult to sand in between all these squares in the mask. So um, I've put some more effort, um, efforts in uh, the Iron Man mask because I was seeing through the process it was starting to look quite good. Um, the two others were a bit more difficult. So use a degreaser in between all the sanding and um, epoxy layers. So this is a fourth layer. As you can see it's it's still starting to look better and better. So this is a process of more time you put in it, the better, the better it will look. So here I'm just trying to show you the reflection on the mask. So these are the two Spider-Man masks. So I'm quite happy about it, but it can be better, but it's it's just a matter of sanding and adding more layers. So if you're not doing it well, at the end you'll, you'll just have a, like a dry fish. Uh, I call it like that. So I'm start I'm marking up so the all the high spots and low spots. So the low spots will still have um, a reflection. And as long as you have these, you still have to add more layers, sand in between, just to get those perfect results. So for me, this was the last layer, so the fifth layer before clear coating. Um, I could have done a sixth and a seventh layer, but for me, it was enough. Um, so then I've started um, using a Dremel tool and a tungsten blade I guess you can find it in the description down below it's coming from the easy composites website uh, website um, it's very good just to cut um, carbon fiber and so on so here I got inspired from the venom mask so I've added added a big mouth to it so <laughs> just having some fun in between um, working so uh, Iron Man was helping me out while cutting so something I, fi I'm, I found out uh, while working on it so the Spider-Man mask was made out of rubbery texture and there wasn't a good bond um, with the carbon fiber and epoxy so this might be something you would like normally if you're making car parts and so on you don't want this to happen so um, take count of that so so this is the final results after painting so uh, two two components um, clear coat was added on top of it and I've added some grids um, painted in gold so this is the Iron Man mask and the two Spider-Man masks, so I'll just let you enjoy those shots uh, from the masks.
So this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you learned something from it, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos and want to see more, please subscribe. You can just click on the YouTube icon. Um, also check out my Facebook page. Um, during the projects, I mostly post some pictures in between. So if you can't wait for the next tutorials and so on, just give my page a like.